Hi, I'm David Eisner from The Trastic Diet. In this video, I thought I would just do a quick little analysis about my Verta filter, which I've been using for years. Um, I don't use it anymore because, of course, I have Pristine Hydro behind me, but uh, I know a lot of people would use this filter or a carbon filter that's like it, and as you can see, I just filtered the water, okay? So it's just freshly filtered water, and I'm going to do some experiments live. Now, the other thing that I did was I bought this... Oh! <laughs> I bought this first alert, um, just a, a standard kit for testing water. It tests uh, bacteria, lead and pesticide, nitrates and nitrites, um, and pH, hardness, and chlorine. Now, uh, the pH on this thing is really not that great. Um, also, the tests are a little bit old, except for the bacteria one, which just came out, because that one takes about uh, 48 hours. Those are pretty instantaneous. And I will tell you what the results are of that, and you can see the colors, but they have changed just a little bit. It's a little bit dramatic. So, anyway, first thing I wanted to show you was the pH of my Breda, okay? I'm going to put my trusty little pH meter in the water, and we're just going to watch that go. It's going pretty fast right now. Sometimes if you stir it around, it goes faster. In the meantime, I'm going to pour it into this one. I'm going to show you the total dissolved solids. Okay? So the total dissolved solids right now, and this does vary a little bit depending on each filter, and I've noticed that. It's about 185, 184, okay? And uh, you can see the pH here of the Brita, 6.3. Now I have tested it as high as 7.6, which is an amazing range. I mean, usually that's what's, when it's been sitting out for a while. I'm not sure whether that has to do with evaporation or chemical reactions it has in the air, or maybe even chemical reactions it's having with the plastic that it's in. I really don't know. All I know is that we just filtered this a couple of minutes ago and it's down to 6.2. Okay, that is the lowest rating I've gotten for this water. Now, it has a lot of total dissolved solids in it. If you watch some of my other videos, there's a more lengthy explanation about it. However, I just want to say quickly, if you have a lot of total dissolved solids, you end up usually having a high pH. But that's not the case here which means there are an extreme amount of acids in that water. So, and any way you cut it, this water is not drinkable. Uh, it's very unhealthy, in my opinion, to, to drink uh, water from either my filter, and that's pretty much a brand new filter. That, that filter is about, uh, I would say, three or four uses old, which is not long at all. The, everything's been cleaned. Uh, Basically, we standardized the test. I, I've, I've tried it a couple different different ways, and I really wanted to believe that I wasn't drinking acid water for the last, I don't know, 10 years of my life. But now it's down to 6.1. This does sometimes, if you leave it in there, change a little bit. Uh, it's making up its mind. That's extremely low. So that's the thing there, and also you have a very high total dissolved solids. Not necessarily a bad thing, but when you have a low pH, it is a bad thing. So, most of this water turned out to be pretty clean, okay? There was, according to these test strips, and you're not going to be able to see them on there, but there's either a very low or no amount of lead and pesticides. Great. Um, but there was a little bit of a blue line, so this is not a lab. This is my home lab. So it's hard to say. Uh, this one showed nitrates and nitrites. Now, it was below the recommended amount, or the, I think, EPA amount, 
is what I read on here. But I still, I don't want any nitrates or nitrites in my water, and there was a significant amount. Then this strip tested um, pH, which it really had around 6, so that was about right. It was uh, pretty hard water, which really meant showing the total dissolved solids. So it was pretty spot on about the hard water. And it showed only a minimal amount of chlorine, which is good. But unfortunately, not zero chlorine. The one thing that really disturbed me about this test was this. Uh, this is the bacteria test. There's two different kinds of answers here, positive and negative. If it's purple, it's a negative result. No bacteria were detected. If it was a positive result, it is highly likely that potential harmful bacteria were detected. Now, highly likely and potentially harmful bacteria. So I don't know what's in this. This is not a full lab, okay? But it's highly likely that a potential bacteria was detected. Now, they recommend that you add bleach to this and put it down before you put it down the toilet. Should I add bleach to the water before I put it down my mouth? I don't really know. But basically you can see here that this is not the optimal water to drink um, based on the pH. There's clearly some things still in it. Doesn't, it, clear, it. It probably clears out a lot of the chlorine. In fact, I'll get the box. The box states that it clears out copper, mercury, cadmium, and chlorine, and zinc. And then it leaves a healthy amount of fluoride. Okay? Now, I don't think there is a healthy amount of fluoride. Uh, that's my personal opinion. Uh, fluoride is dangerous, in my opinion, and shouldn't be in our water at all. But, of course it is, and it leaves it in there, so you know that. You're going to drink fluoridated water if you drink Brita water. So, that's pretty much my analysis of Brita. As you can see, I've been testing a ton of water here, and we're going to make some more videos. If you like this, share it with your friend. You found, if you found it inter interesting or helpful, then uh, comment and let other people know about it so they, they know what their Brita water is actually like. And I encourage you to pick up a pH meter and a TDS meter and see what your Brita water is like. Thanks for watching.